Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar as we introduce you to our under vehicle surveillance system, the Secure OS UVSS, and discuss how organizations across a variety of industries are using it to detect a wide range of hidden threats. I'm Joel Griffin, Director of Marketing for North America at ISS, and I will be your moderator for today's program. As most of you are probably aware, screening the undercarriage of vehicles presents a number of challenges. For one, most of the solutions that have been used historically, such as pole-mounted mirrors, are not only time-consuming to conduct, but they are also prone to human error and leave security personnel vulnerable to IEDs and other threats. The SecureOS UVSS is a combination hardware-software solution that eliminates the need for manual inspections of undercarriages and allows security teams to conduct scans remotely, removing them from harm's way. In today's program, we're going to provide you with an in-depth overview of the UVSS and provide you with a roadmap for how you can take advantage of it in your own screening applications. Today's webinar will be broken down into several parts. Following a quick introduction of today's speaker, we will briefly discuss who ISS is as a company and how we define video intelligence. That will be followed by a rundown of how the UVSS works and the different use cases it can be leveraged for. Finally, the last 10 to 15 minutes of today's program will be reserved for Q&A with you, our audience. Please submit a question at any time using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. We will answer as many questions as possible during this time verbally. At the conclusion of today's program, we will randomly select an attendee who, stay, who stayed on for the duration of the event to receive a $50 Amazon gift card. Your speaker for today's program is Russell Compton, Director of Strategic Partnerships at ISS. Russ has an extensive background in the physical security industry, having previously served as Director of Strategic Sales and Partner Management for Identity Access Management at HID Global, and as Vice President of Sales at IntelliSoft prior to that. Also on today's program, we have one of our engineers, Kenny Geronimo, who will take part in the Q&A to answer any technical questions regarding the UVS and how it can be deployed. Our managing director for North America, Matt Powell, is also uh, on today's webinar to answer any other questions that may arise. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Russ. Russ, take it away. Joel, thank you so much for that warm introduction. I appreciate being here and thank you for the other panelists uh, that will help us answer questions along the way. So um, first we'll talk about ISS, who we are, uh, for more than a quarter century, ISS has been a global pioneer and innovator in video intelligence. I'll explain what we mean by video intelligence in just a moment, uh, but we're one of the largest companies of our kind. Uh, we're based in New Jersey. Uh, we have deployments uh, across six continents, 56 countries, uh, and somewhere throughout the globe, our solutions are running on 3.5 million cameras. <clears throat> we also have our own intellectual property, uh, we have over 25 patents and video intelligence products. Uh, and again, when we mention we're a pioneer, we've been doing facial recognition since 2003 and license plate recognition since 2004. I'm excited to be talking about uh, the under vehicle surveillance systems today that we uh, have some patented technology on as well. In terms of thought leadership, we have a lot of leaders within our organization uh, that have been on different uh, covers of magazines in the media. Uh, we have award-winning technology. Uh, in terms of uh, security and safety around under vehicle surveillance technology, I'd like to point you to the bottom of the screen where uh, in securityinfowatch.com, uh, one of our lead engineers, uh, Eugene Batenbrod, uh, does a discussion or holds a discussion in terms of LPR installation best practices. So if you go on uh, securityinfowatch.com, you can search uh, for LPR uh, best practices and look more uh, into that information that kind of supports what we're talking about today. Um, I mentioned earlier, we talk about what defining video intelligence is. Uh, the first thing is we do have, uh, we want to collect a culmination of analytics, decision management, and data uh, for our customers. And the first thing that we'll do is our neural network has been trained on several different analytics that will dictate what exactly is an event is that needs to be recorded. If you look at the first video, 
Uh, it's a video of a person who has approached a wall and they're using their hand in circular movement motions. This is detecting that someone is performing graffiti on a wall. The next thing that happens is once we determine that event, we'll pass that information over to our uh, user interface. Uh, this is our video management uh, module in the second column. Uh, and that allows our individuals or our operators to look at the event that's happening in real time, where this information can be recorded and reviewed at a later date. Third, depending on what analytic or event has been captured, we have a decision-making tool. We wanna make sure that our customers are informed, that they can make faster, smarter decisions, uh, and that we have a planned response. So if you have someone uh, that's working with graffiti on a wall compared to uh, maybe in a hospital where you have a fallen person, the response is gonna be different. The people you communicate with are different as well. So we wanna make sure that uh, we have that planned and each analytic that our customers work with have a decision-making process to follow and go through. And then finally, we take and store this information and turn it into all the analytics and data. We capture uh, metadata through our configurable dashboards. Uh, this allows our customers at a long term and a long plan envision what's happening, what's growing as trends, and really understand their environment better. Um, in terms of under vehicle surveillance systems, we have a problem statement. Uh, we have government organizations, military bases, um, locations that have sensitive information like research that are all facing threats under terrorism, theft, and smuggling. Uh, they want to protect these locations and the traveling public uh, and keep them free uh, of any harm and out of the way. Now, in terms of smuggling, you're looking at crossing the border or in uh, ports and terminals. All of these locations need to detect hidden threats, and it's important to have the latest and greatest technology at your fingertips uh, to utilize in order to detect these threats early uh, and make sure that they, they do not enter your facility. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, again, we offer the leading under vehicle surveillance system. We talked about some of the infrastructure and some of the military bases that, that might utilize the system long term, day in and day out. But this also is a system that's not only durable, but it's mobile. So you, we've actually protected not only at the World Cup, uh, some facilities there, as well as uh, the college football championship. Uh, so that we're able with this device to go in, plan a couple of days in advance, set it up and test and use this for a one-time situation uh, that might be a really threat uh, for, for terrorism or some type of other threat that's happening. Um, if you look to the right, uh, this is just a, a capture of the operating system, the secure OS graphic user interface that we're working with. We want to make sure it's a simple interface that operators and look at a live scan of the vehicle going uh, over the actual scanning platform, can look at events over to the right and capture, uh, not only for training purposes in the future, but if they need to recall and look at uh, a scan that happened recently, those are at your fingertips. And finally, let's just say a vehicle leaves the property uh, and we've captured that information uh, via our LPR, our license plate recognition. We want to have that information up and ready and available if authorities need to be alerted uh, or, or called at that time. Um, and, and really, it's, it's a technology that scans multiple images underneath the undercarriage and stitches those all together. And we'll talk about how that works uh, in just a minute. So let's go to the next slide. There's a few minimum requirements in terms of hardware and software, and we'll talk about that at this time. The first thing you want to do is want to make sure we have success of making sure that the vehicle is passing over the UVSS platform to get a good scan. So as you'll see in some videos that we'll pull up in just a little bit, it's great to have some cones or some direction providing uh, the drivers uh, to pull into the right location and you can have multiple lanes. Next, you want to have uh, an LPR camera set up to capture the license plate and information and possibly as an option capturing uh, the facial recognition uh, of the individual driving the car. 
and you want to have enough room after the scan for that car to stop uh, before the gate uh, is lifted and access is provided to your facility. All this is tied uh, to the secure OS controller or server uh, and the workstation that uh, works and fits alongside the unit so that a proper scan can be evaluated before uh, individuals move forward. So minimum hardware components are the scanning device, the LPR camera, and the UVSS controller or server. And then we have optional uh, hardware components uh, such as UVSS cleaning, where we provide uh, uh, liquid and air uh, spraying across the actual camera housing to clean it, as well as a heating element, just in case there is uh, some mist or fog on the actual unit. And then lastly, we recommend having a surveillance camera that's capturing everything all at once. It isn't focused on any uh, unique detail. And then next, we'll click forward. We'll talk about the solution uh, in terms of software. Software, we're going to uh, require that you use our secure OS platform. That's going to enable the video management and monitoring uh, to store each incident uh, on servers, uh, enable to build a video archive as well as we're going to have uh, a secure OS uh, GUI interface uh, located at the event where you can scan and look at uh, the under vehicles to make a, a proper determination uh, if there is a threat before allowing anyone onto your property. And finally, uh, again, optional components in terms of our set, secure OS auto is the facial recognition, uh, which will tie uh, a user to a, an automobile uh, with license plate recognition. And then we can tie into any third-party device that you have. I think a great example is tying into access control. We have a Linnell integration uh, that allows through one single interface uh, to conduct the scan and then allow access into the facility at that point. That means that your individual is not only reviewing the scan, but is the person that uh, will allow the access uh, at the same time. Um, and not only do we want to scan, uh, we want high resolution. So I just took a, a, an image here of the middle of the scanning device, uh, and we want to make sure that uh, it's consistent and reliable with a high quality scan. It's not affected by unique human factors or fatigue. This system will work uh, by itself uh, throughout the process without any distraction. Uh, and support uh, different vehicle speeds. As long as that vehicle is traveling between one to two miles per hour uh, and 22 miles per hour, we're gonna get a clear, precise scan uh, and allow your operators to make a great uh, decision. Also in low light um, facilities like entering parking garages, we have 12 LED lights uh, constructed around the actual scanning device that are timed with the camera that stitches the image all together and gives a great quality image. And then our patent pended uh, technology is the dewarping technology. We have uh, essentially a hundred scans of the under vehicle. We stitch those all together. We remove any distortion uh, and allow the operators to make the best decision. And we'll show you some of those images moving forward. Here's, where we're gonna take a look at two videos of how the system works. I'll go ahead and, and we'll show the first UPS truck uh, driving over and you can see with minimum interference uh, how we direct through the cones to get a good scan of the UPS truck. Once the image is scanned, you'll see that in the guard shack or the sock located, uh, that the individual can look at the scan and determine if uh, this system is a threat. On the next video, it's going to be a little bit different. We have the capability of determining when the air under undercarriage of a vehicle is present, and that's when the scan, and only when the scan begins. If you see it lighting up, each of the 12 LED lights will be scanning and, and st stitching these images together. So I think that's really important. You're only going to get good takes of vehicle scans and allow that data not to be, uh, you know, trashed by other uh, systems or, or people walking over uh, the, the, the system and it taking off. All right, we'll move on to the next slide. So we want to give a typical use case uh, for our users who are attendees that are coming to the event today. Um, 
what we do as an organization is work with our partners and work directly with you uh, to talk about the facility challenges that you might have. And in a typical case, uh, we've been approached by government facilities uh, who have a high traffic flow. They have uh, trusted individuals who come onto their site between 7.30 and 8.30 a.m., and that can present a high bottleneck or a, a slowing of entry there. They need a solution that is fast, can scan, uh, and make sure that the threat is detected uh, quickly uh, and allow their people to go to work. Also, we have events where uh, there's low light environments, where entering a parking garage might be difficult for the human element of someone uh, trying to scan with a uh, reflective mirror uh, isn't going to be in the best environment. So the fact that we have LEDs and lights with our system, we control the environment and allow to get a good scan. And then all of these locations are high security demand, government complexes are private uh, prime targets for any threats. And then anytime you have several points of entry, that means that you have to have more staff that are trained. So we'll show you in just a minute with some of the uh, videos that we continue to present how easy it is to monitor the system uh, and train individuals and teams on it so that uh, your facility uh, remains safe uh, and secure. And then it integrates with access control. Use one seamless function, one user interface uh, to provide access after a, a full um, threat uh, evaluation has been completed. Um, so this is where efficiency meets uh, zero trust. And what I mean by that is you have 95 to 98% uh, in some cases, people that have been trusted have been on your site before. Our technology uses multiple technologies like facial recognition, license plate recognition to really match and identify who, who are trusted users. But we also wanna take that with a zero trust approach. Just doesn't mean that per se, Mr. Jones showing up, who's shown up every day, that he's not a threat today to, to based on his vehicle has had exposure to some person or a, a foreign threat. We wanna make sure that all the scans are taking place, but we wanna get this person into the facility as soon as possible and give them the greatest experience. So what's gonna happen first with our solution, and we'll show you in a video momentarily, is the face is identified, that can be matched to a license plate recognition. And then if uh, the scan matches a previous scan of that particular uh, vehicle that has come into the facility before and there's no anomalies, great. Mr. Jones can go on to work and you have a pass rate. Uh, but what happens next is if you come through and there is an anomaly that takes place, and I'll ask Joel to click for the next slide, that threat will be detected uh, it'll be a known foreign object, and it'll allow your operators to take a closer look uh, at that vehicle before we allow entry. And so that's a good way of saying that no matter who's trusted, uh, it's always going to take a good uh, a vehicle scan uh, to, to allow entry into your facility. And this is just a closer look. So some of the questions that we get from time to time is how does it actually detect or how does it alert the operators of what a foreign object is or what is an anomaly? An anomaly is by taking a previous good scan that was approved and comparing it to the most recent scan. Uh, if there's any changes, we're gonna get an orange overlay like you see here on the screen. Uh, but if a threat is actually detected, and we'll show you in a video uh, approaching uh, with an explosive device, we'll actually put a red box around it. So the technology will not only provide a, a very high resolution scan, it'll actually point you to the threats that have been detected uh, so that you can zero in and, and do a, a better uh, job operating and, and stopping that vehicle from entering the facility. Next slide. So we'll run the video. Here's what the operating, uh, the actual graphic user interface looks like. You have the LPR camera capturing the, the vehicle as it comes through. You have a live video of the scan that's being uh, taken. And then as the computer processes and stitches that complete scan together, uh, you'll see it uh, located on the bottom uh, in a side-by-side -side comparison of a previous scan of that individual. 
it seems that the video froze up just a little bit. As that video completes, you'll see over to the right uh, that you have each and every scan that's happened this morning, as well as the most recent scan, not only side by side on the bottom, um, but you'll see the license plate has been identified and pulled up just in case uh, the operator needs to use that information. So what we've detected here is a foreign object, which is an explosive device. This operator can click on the tool set to the right and expand and bring in a little bit better view of it, as you saw what they did earlier and, and brought that in. So it's a full HD scan uh, that can be detailed. And again, it's a very simple user interface for your operators, easy to train on, easy to navigate, easy to look and, and determine threats. There you go. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, just wanted to pull together a couple of slides of the actual platform uh, that is the scanning platform and give you a couple of the wow factors and the high level um, solutions for that. First, it's very compact, it's very flat. The latest uh, design can actually lay flat on the pavement and be bolted down. Um, it does not require heavy construction to deploy and it's easy to maintain. The next feature that is there's no need for any physical sensors. As you saw in a previous video, the camera technology and the AI that we work with will detect a vehicle as it approaches in the undercarriage and automatically scan uh, the vehicle uh, and get that ready for observation. As we mentioned, we, we want you to guide your uh, vehicles uh, so that they pass directly over the camera technology. However, we do have a very high load capacity so that if uh, a vehicle does run on the outside, it's up to 30 tons per axle uh, that the actual scanning device will support. And if they happen to be way off uh, and run directly over the dome, uh, that'll take up to three, dome, uh, three tons of, of weight on it uh, over the camera housing and protect it. So very highly durable. And then finally, um, underneath vehicles is a location where you're going to, from time to time, get an oil drip or kick up uh, debris onto the system. Uh, we want your teams focused on security first. And we have an option where you could actually spray and blow air over the device and clean that so that you continue to get good scans throughout the day. Uh, as well as, so there's a cleaning device for it, as well as optional heating element uh, that would remove um, the, the frost from a system in, in colder environments. Okay. All right, this, we really haven't looked into license plate recognition technology. So this video is gonna show you at high speed rates, cars that can go by one after another, we can capture each of those images um, and store that information so that you can view it at a later date. We operate in all 50 states and over 100 different countries, so we can recognize license plates uh, throughout the world. Uh, and we're also able to identify through our analytics uh, the color, make, and models of a car. Um, and something that we can tie into, whether it's an amber alert or a stolen vehicle database, we can have our camera technology out there looking for a, a particular car as it passes and pass that information along to law enforcement. And what we can do is, is tell them based on the camera technology and analytic is how fast the car was going and what direction it was last seen. Uh, so it's a great uh, license plate recognition uh, device uh, for our municipalities and, and our governments who, who are in law enforcement. That tied in with our under vehicle det um, detection system is a good system for recording information about what vehicles have um, entered your facility. Easy to query and search. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. We also have uh, manufacturing in Miramar, California. I'm sorry, Miramar, Florida. Uh, and this is our Mo MODIS uh, camera, uh, which has been tested uh, on our license plate recognition with our analytics. Uh, however, we are agnostic. If you already have camera technology set up at your facility, we will work with that. But we do 
let you know that we have the capabilities and for in terms of a complete um, turn system, we can do it beginning to end. And by the way, this meets the following criteria for Department of Transportation in terms of shock um, and um, uh, the durability of what that camera takes care of. All right, we'll go to the next slide. Just a final look at what our uh, distributed solution architecture looks like. Uh, we'd already viewed what it looks like to, to set up a UVS uh, platform uh, and the LPR cameras and, and how that vehicle will be um, captured as it, it rolls and approaches uh, your facility. It's a multi-lane technology solution uh, that you can set up and provide for lots, uh, several cars that are approaching or vehicles that are approaching your facility. And then if you want, we can set up with a remote data center uh, and information that is captured in terms of video surveillance, facial information, uh, as well as tied into your third, third party integrations. All that inf information can be stored remotely in the data center. Uh, and this is all tied uh, to your operators uh, at the workstation level who are approving uh, utility and vehicles that are coming forward. So with that, I'll turn it back over uh, to Joel. Thank you guys so much. And we'll look forward to having uh, or hosting some questions from you. And this time I'll ask my panelists to come on video with me and we'll answer the questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Russ. Appreciate that. Uh, as you uh, noted, we've reached the time in today's program for Q&A. Again, you can submit a question using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And we've had uh, a few questions that uh, have come in throughout the course of the presentation, uh, Russ. Uh, one uh, question that came in uh, is, uh, what are the minimum workstation requirements for the UVSS? Yeah, I can answer that. Oh, sorry, Russ, go thank ahead. You. No, Kenny, thank you very much. If you'll address that question, it'll be great. Yeah, so right now the requirements that we uh, recommend would be an i7 12th generation CPU that can support of, uh, that supports up to 12 cores, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and then you can have a uh, 500 gigabyte uh, for OneDrive that's going to be hosting your operating system. And then um, if you wanted to, for storage, the max data, the max uh, data for storage would be uh, about four terabytes. So that's that's what we, we would recommend. All right, thank you, Kenny. Uh, another question along the same lines, can the server be remote? It can. Um, normally we always uh, see the, so the UVSS controller uh, does support up to four network ports. Uh, those are all four dedicated uh, gigabyte ports. So um, we always uh, say that, you know, to have the actual platform connected directly to the uh, controller. So that way it could support uh, the 100 frames per second um, that is required for the actual video stream of the uh, UVSS platform. Um, now, if you wanted to utilize that platform and controller, if you wanted to host that controller externally, right, not uh, directly connected to the platform, uh, the only thing that we would require is to have a dedicated gigabyte port to support that specific 100 frames. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that that we would consult with the teams on here asking those questions uh, and put together a, a list of uh, documentation that would really support their architecture. But yeah, it's a good question. So we had uh, another question that came in uh, from one of our attendees. Um, can you give more details about the magnetic magnetic sensors map and, and how all that works? Can you, will you talk to that? Yeah, so basically, uh, as we all know, there is metal right underneath the undercarriages. So that it's actually a great question. So basically, what it is, is um, there's specific ma magnetic magnets, right? So it's basically, let's say you have an object. And you tie that object to a magnet, and you and you um, it sticks to the undercarriage, right? That is the specific magne magnetic um, anomaly that we are trying to track. So we're not looking for, um, you know, the the specific types of metal that's uh, actually underneath your undercarriage. It's the actual magnets that get stuck to the actual metal of your car. That's basically what we are uh, trying to identify and find. Good, and, and I would add to that is. Through AI technology and through several years of scanning 
undercarriages and different libraries of handguns, grenades, or different threats. We put together a great library uh, that we are detecting any pieces uh, that are anomalies uh, underneath uh, the undercarriage, uh, and we will bring that to light and um, put a red box around that information for you guys to view. But yes, we've done this for several years, and, and that's a great capability of ours just over time, building up that library. Uh, another uh, quick follow-up on the, the magnetic uh, sensors question. Do you provide a magnetic loop to zoom in to zoom in on the scanned image? Uh, yes. So you can utilize, um, you definitely have the ability to zoom in, you know, to, to these specific areas of where there are magnetic anomalies. Um, and we also have uh, what's called a 3D magnifier, which basically gives you a, a 3D aspect ratio of the actual image to look like inside the nooks and crannies of the actual new carriage. So, you know, you'll have the ability to zoom in um, as needed. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kenny. Um, I guess, Russ, I'll address this question to you. What are some of the applications that the UVSS can be used for outside of traditional security screening environments? Traditional. I I think we mentioned a couple of them. Uh, you know, traditional, what we see is military bases, airports, seaports. Uh, but we've had a growing need uh, as more and more events uh, come forward. Uh, we mentioned earlier in the, the presentation that uh, for the World Cup, any place where you're going to have a large gathering of public, uh, of the public uh, and individuals, uh, we want to make sure that's a safe and protected environment. Vendors need to come in and bring food, uh, set up and infrastructure built uh, for that event. Um, and uh, the combination of having people and, and uh, bringing those vendors in is, is, is a threat because there's large vehicles that can could pose a threat or hide uh, you know, any type of explosive device. So we've seen that at the World Cup um, and recently um, protected and worked with the College Football National Championship. So I think events are a, a big thing that are taking place and in the event that we have a mobile device now, uh, per se, uh, that is a small system, light system, and easy to deploy, uh, we can protect uh, those environments. Uh, another question that came in, uh, Russ, how does the UVSS perform in, in high through, you know, high throughput environments, you know, where you have vehicles coming in, you know, one after the other, how does, how does it handle that, you know, about what kind of is the average of time to screen, you know, look at the, look at the image, clear the vehicle, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I don't know if there's, a, there, there's an average time, but I think what we demonstrated today uh, is, the, is that your teams that are conducting uh, these scans and searches really have the flexibility of allowing the driver uh, to roll over this device at their own pace. So I think in terms of not having to do a rescan or validation, uh, our device that we want to promote is going to get a, a good scan for the first time. And as well, it will uh, provide uh, a little bit more of a head start for those cars that have been trusted in the past that have a previous scan. We will pull, it will automatically pull up and match uh, the previous scan with today's scan. And if there's zero anomalies, uh, it will allow you to see that uh, it is a perfect match. Um, and you can you can move that person more into a pass uh, status rather quickly uh, as an operator and, and allow them to enter your facility. We we are um, we do have this system installed currently um, at a port that has high traffic from 7:30 to 9 o'clock, um, and it's working very well um, and moving uh, over 2,000 uh, vehicles uh, approach that facility each and every day. So. It's a good it's a good system for that. Uh, one other question that, that came in uh, here. Uh, can you give more details about the warranty and technical support terms? I, th I think one of the things on the warranties is if there's ever a, a problem with the uh, the scanning system, it is a return uh, and replacement next day. We'll ship out a new system while we're working on the, the current one. Uh, and that uh, is something that we can detail. But yeah, we'll certainly bring up the warranty. Uh, is there any other information on that, Kenny, that you want to provide? 
No, uh, so uh, the physical unit, I believe, has a one-year warranty. Um, but as you mentioned, you know, it got, God forbid, the device fails and needs to be replaced. We do have next business day shipping for the actual unit. Um, and in regards to the support, it's all based off of the SMA, right, that, that, that the client would purchase. So if they do a one year, three year, five year, if they want to extend it to 10 year, right, you'll, you'll, you'll get that, that, that service, right, that you paid for, basically. So. All right. Well, that's pretty much uh, all the questions that we had. Um, so just to, uh, to close things out here, um, you know, I want to thank everyone who attended today's program, as well as Russ and Kenny for sharing their, their insights on the topic. Uh, to learn more about the UVSS, uh, visit uvss.tech and request a demo, or you can uh, reach out to Russ directly. Uh, and uh, his email is uh, russell.compton at issivs.com. Um, 